The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous cheese food Velveeta. Everybody goes for Velveeta's rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor in snacks, in sandwiches, and in hot dishes. And Velveeta, you know, helps supply important food values from milk. It's as digestible as milk itself. That's why smart homemakers keep Velveeta on hand regularly to spread or slice and to melt for grand economical hot dishes. Tomorrow, get Velveeta. The cheese food of craft quality. Say, looks like a family huddle in the living room of the great Gildersleeve's house. There's Marjorie, Leroy, and Bertie, and they have photographs of Marjorie scattered all over the floor. How do you like this one, Bertie? Oh, that one's real good. It shows off your eyes. I like this one with a big face. Looks like you had a mouthful of walnuts. <laughs> Is that you, Anki? Yeah, I'm home. Yeah, what's going on here? Marge is going to have a picture in the paper. We're picking one out. What's this? It's for the Summerfield Indicator, announcing the engagement. Why do they have to put it in the paper just because she gets engaged to Bronco Thompson? Well, it's traditional, my boy, to announce events of this kind. Let's see these pictures. Yeah. Kneel down here where I can see. Or you'll get my vest out of the way. Well, I kind of like this one. The profile. Oh, I think that's awful, Anki. There's too much light on my nose. Yeah. She looks like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. (laughs) (laughs) Very good, Leroy. (laughs) Which one do you like? Why don't you take this one, Marge? Well, I'm not crazy about that one either. Which one is that? The one where all her teeth are showing. Look, you can count them. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve... All right, Leroy, let's not overdo it. Bertie likes the one in the evening dress. I think they're all nice. On second thought, why don't we send the paper this one of you, arranging poinsettias on the piano? But, Unky, don't you like the close-up better? Well, Marjorie, they can squeeze a close-up into one column. But with you, the poinsettias, and the piano, they'll have to give you three columns to get it all in. (laughs) When's the picture going to be in, Miss Marjorie? Well, they want to run it tomorrow afternoon, Bertie, along with the announcement. By the way, Marjorie, what's the announcement going to say? Oh, the usual thing the society editor writes about engagements. Usual thing? Well, it seems to me it deserves more than that. After all, this is no ordinary engagement. No, sir. When Miss Marjorie gets engaged, that's something special. You said it, Bertie. Don't think I want to leave an important thing like this to the society editor? Think I'd better write it myself. Oh, would you, Anki? Certainly. The bride's family's supposed to make the announcement. I'll do it right after dinner. Sure. Give it a big build-up, Unc. How about announcing it on the radio? What? Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. North America and all the ships at sea. Oh, yep. Leroy. Flash, water commissioners and East Plans to Middle Island. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Don't worry. Mr. Gilsley will lay it on. <laughs> now, Bertie, it'll be a short, simple, dignified announcement. Where's my typewriter and a big stack of paper? <laughs> We'll see here how out of the society page handle these things. Yeah, here's a pretty bride to be, Miss Carolyn Elliot McIntyre. Hmm. Think I'll pattern my announcement after hers. It's the longest. <laughs> Let's see. It goes something like this: Miss Marjorie Forrester's troth told, wedding to Mr. Bronco Thompson set for late spring. Yeah, Bronco doesn't sound right. <laughs> Better use his real name. What is it? Oh, yes. Walter J. Thompson. Well, here goes. Well, let's see what I have here so far. Miss Forrester is attending Summerfield City College, where her fiancé, Mr. Thompson, graduates in June. Eh, We hope. (laughs) (laughs) Both young people are popular members of the younger set. Good. Let's see what I said about me. The bride-elect is the niece of Mr. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, city water commissioner. 
<laughs> Not bad. <laughs> the member of the Elks, uh, 1724. <laughs> Pretty long paragraph about me, but very interesting. Now, what can I say about Bronco's family? Hmm. Never even met him. Have to go ask Bronco. Bronco! Oh, yes, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah. May I disturb you and Marjorie a minute? Oh, sure, Mr. Gildersleeve. I was just waiting until you finished. I wanted to talk to you. Oh? My father and mother would like you and Marjorie and Leroy to drive over to Broadmoor and have dinner with us Saturday evening. Dinner? Well, fine. Isn't that wonderful, Unky? Yes, indeed. Tell them we'd be delighted, Bronco. Well, they thought it was about time the family of the bride met the family of the groom. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. I was just wondering about them when I was writing this announcement. I said a few things about me, but I don't know what to say about your family. Oh, well... Oh, Bronco's mother's a darling, Uncle Mort, and you'll like Mr. Thompson. I'm sure I will. What does your father do, Bronco? He's in the book business, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh. Uh, we wanted to have you over sooner, but father's out of town a lot. Sells books, eh? Uh, yes, sir, I guess you'd call it that. Well, I'll mention that. Yeah. See you later, kiddies. All right, Mr. Gildersleeve. Bye, Uncle. Hmm. Too bad there isn't as much to say about Bronco's father as there is about me. <laughs> After all, what can you say about a book salesman except get your foot out of the door? <laughs> Cold out here. Where is that paper boy? If you must know, Leroy, I'm waiting for the paper boy. What a character. Yes, yes. Eh, that must be the boy coming around the corner. Sounds like his motor scooter. No, Judge Hooker's car. Why doesn't he get that old cement mixer fixed? Hello, Gildy. Hello, Judge. <laughs> Why are you standing out in the cold, Gildy, playing snowman? <laughs> <laughs> Watch it, Hooker. You'll get a snowball right through your Isinglass curtain. <laughs> I should think you'd be in toasting your toes by the fire. Waiting for the paper boy, Horace. Marjorie's engagement is announced this afternoon. It is? Yeah. Picture of Marjorie in a nice little write-up about the families. Well, I'd like to wait and see it, Gilda, but I'm afraid to let my car stand too long. It's hard to start in cold weather. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> well, I've got a duplicate copy of the announcement right here, Judge. It just so happens. You have? Yeah. <laughs> Wrote it myself. Miss Marjorie Forrester's trough toe. Isn't that exciting, Gildy? No wonder you just can't wait for the paper. Yeah, go ahead and read it, Horace. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, splendid. Uh, well said about Bronco and Marjorie. Yeah, keep reading, Judge. The bride elect is the niece of Mr. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, city water commissioner and prominent civic leader. What? Read, Judge. Among his many activities, Mr. Gildersleeve is a member of a downtown businessman's club. The Jolly Boys, I presume. Well? Member of the Elks Club and an ex-member of the school board. Mr. Gildersleeve is also a patron of the opera when he comes to town. <laughs> Gildy, this doesn't sound like an engagement announcement. People are always interested in the bride's family. Oh? Well, let's see what you said about the groom's family. Mr. Thompson's father... He's a well-known book salesman. Gildy, is that all you wrote about Bronco's father? Well, I said well-known. Can I help it if he's not as prominent as I am? We're going over to Broadmoor to have dinner with him tomorrow night. We want to be on good terms with the family. Might even buy a book from him. Dictionary or something. Uh-oh, here's the paper boy now. Watch out, Judge. I caught it! Yeah, right in your nose. <laughs> Open it up, Judge. Everybody in Summerfield will be reading this tonight. It'll be on the society page, I suppose. Chances are, Judge. Yes, here's Marjorie's picture. Let me see. Beautiful girl, Gildy. Yeah, and three columns. Look at there. By George, I know how to handle these things. Well, they printed the article just as you wrote it, Gildy, except for a couple of changes. What changes? The bride-elect is the niece of Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, local water commissioner, period. <laughs> Is that all? No, there's a lot more, but it isn't about you. Let me see that. The father of the groom is Mr. Edward C. Thompson of Broadmoor, widely known collector of first editions and noted art critic. 
Mr. Thompson recently returned from New York where he's highly regarded as an authority on modern art. <laughs> it seems the editor added a few pertinent facts that you didn't know about, Gillette. Well, he didn't have to cut out the fact that I'm pretty well known, too. Sounds like a very important person. I know Mr. Thompson will be just tickled pink when you buy a dictionary from him. <laughs> All right, Hooker. Well, goodbye, prominent civic leader. Yes, yes. Gildy, my car won't start. What'll I do? It's just tin and icing glass. Why don't you eat it, you old goat? <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be back very shortly. Now with the youngsters back at school, things are getting back on schedule. And many of you mothers find that a basketball game schedule has come up on your social calendar. Here's just the thing to serve that hungry gang when they come trooping in from the game. And it's easy if you have in the house some of those long Frankfurter rolls and a two-pound loaf of Kraft's famous cheese food, Velveeta. Now here's what you do. Split the Frankfurter rolls and spread them with Kraft mayonnaise or Kraft mustard. Then fill them with good thick strips of Velveeta with the rich yet mild cheddar flavor everybody likes. Brush the tops of the rolls with melted parquet margarine and pop them into a moderate oven just long enough to melt that Velveeta to a marvelous bubbling gold. Serve piping hot and listen to your teenagers call you a mighty sharp hostess. And mighty sharp is right, because like milk, Velveeta is rich in important food values growing youngsters especially need. And it's digestible as milk itself, too. Velveeta is a treat food that's good for the gang. So keep stocked with the two-pound loaf that can help you so many ways. Tomorrow, get wholesome, helpful Velveeta. Well, it's beginning to look as though Marjorie's marrying into a family of rather important people, which comes as something of a surprise to the great Gildersleeve. He and Marjorie and Leroy are invited to the Thompsons for dinner. But is the water commissioner worried? Well... Hmm. So Bronco's father is an art critic and collector of first editions, eh? Well, he won't bother me any. Guess I'd better stop in and get some better cigars, though. Hello, P.V. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? You can give me a half dozen of your best cigars, P.V. Very well. We're driving over to Broadmoor tonight to see Marjorie's prospective in-laws. Well, that should be an interesting experience. I see by the paper that this Mr. Thompson is quite a fellow. Well, there are a lot of things they could have said about me, but I don't go for that publicity stuff. <laughs> <laughs> paper says he's a collector of first editions and an authority on modern art. Well? What are you two going to talk about? <laughs> I don't see any problem there, Peavy. There's no reason why I can't carry on an intelligent conversation with an intellectual like Mr. Thompson. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, if you're like most businessmen and don't follow the arts too closely... Conversation could be a problem. I know it would with me. Well, Peavy, he can talk about his work and I can talk about mine. I can talk about water for hours without running dry. <laughs> right, yes. Naturally, I'm no authority on the arts. I'm sure Mr. Thompson won't expect me to be. No, I guess he won't. You'll naturally assume that I've been too busy with my own affairs to learn much about first editions. Yes, I guess he will. And if I don't know anything about this modern art, he'll understand. Well, he couldn't expect it of the water commissioner. Oh, he couldn't, eh? What does he think I am, a dunderhead? How's that? <laughs> what does he think he's going to do, talk about art all evening and embarrass me in front of Marjorie? I wouldn't have that happen to my niece for anything. Oh, no, you wouldn't want that to happen. Why, George Peavy, do you know what I'm going to do? Stay home? Yeah. <laughs> No, Peavy, I'm going to borrow Marjorie's library card and bone up on first editions in modern art. What do you think of that? My, my. Yeah. Chirac, don't stumble over the tracks. Oh. Leroy, you 
you've got your model railroad running all over this house. Yeah. Margie! Here I am, Anki. I'd like to borrow your library card, my dear. Why do you want my library card? Well, because I'm going to the library. You go to the library, Ankh? That's what I said, Leroy. Imagine a grown man going to the library. <laughs> There's nothing so unusual about that. For you? Are you kidding? Yeah, yeah. Here's the card, Uncle Mort. But can't you go some other time? There's a lot to do before we go to the Thompsons. Well, I'd like to spend a couple of hours in the library before I have my first talk with your future father-in-law. Why, Unky? Well, I'd like to browse through some of the books on modern art. After all, first impressions are important. And I want our little family to make a good impression for your sake. But he won't expect you to know anything about art. That's what I resent. That's exactly why I'm going to the library. <laughs> oh, but, Unky, their family is different from ours. Why, even Bronco knew all about the modern painters by the time he was ten. He did? So what does it get him? Since he was ten, eh? Oh, uh, Leroy. Yeah, Unk? Get your overshoes and your little stocking cap. You're going to the library with me. Oh, for corn's sake. <laughs> My dress, Bertie. Come in, Miss Marjorie. I wonder what's keeping Uncle Morton Leroy. It takes a couple of hours to get to Broadmoor, and we'll have to hurry. They just came into the driveway. Mr. Gillsleeve sure is cute the way he wants to make the right impression on them in-laws. Oh, yes, Unky's a dear. Well, we're back. We haven't much time, Unky. You and Leroy will have to hurry and dress. Sorry we're a little late, my dear, but I feel the afternoon was well spent. It was spent, all right. Now, my boy, we learned some very important things. I think Degas, for example, is best known for his ballet girls. And Picasso was perhaps the most original of the modern school. Unky, it's Picasso. Picasso, yeah. Well, he was very good, though. When he painted a profile, Marjorie, he put both eyes on the same side of the head, like a halibut. <laughs> That's the way Leroy used to draw, both eyes on one side of the head. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what they call impressionistic, Bertie. Yes. Yeah, Leroy, put that old train away. You have to get dressed. Come on, Leroy. We don't want to be late. You can take your bath while I shave. Another bath? And for heaven's sakes, Leroy, watch your table manners. I always do. Yes, yes. And when we leave the Thompsons, my boy, don't forget to tell them that you enjoyed the evening. Gosh, if everybody's so worried about how I'm going to act, maybe I'd better stay home and play with my train. <laughs> Mr. Gillsleeve's just anxious for you to make a good impression, Leroy. He don't want to start off on the outs with the in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, run for the tub, Leroy I'm going Chug, 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 chug Woo! Oh, that boy It's a good thing Bronco's folks can't see us now Now, don't worry, Mother. You're going to like Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I hope so. Oh, he's a very nice fella. He's always been swell to me. Well, he should be, Bronco. You're an exceptional boy. Oh, Mother. Isn't he, Edward? Oh, yes. Who? I'm talking about our Bronco. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, what about him? Uh, nothing, Father. Uh, Mother was asking me about Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, yes, the Summerfield Water Commissioner. Well, if he's anything like his charming niece, I'm sure I shall be delighted with him. Oh, I'm afraid he isn't anything like Marjorie. Like I told you, he's a little on the chubby side. Oh, dear. And Marjorie's so slender now. I do hope excessive weight doesn't run in the family. You know, Martha, it's a matter of some concern to me that we may not find a common ground for conversation this evening. Oh, stop fretting, Edward. You know how fascinating you can be when the conversation gets around to art. I seriously doubt if art interests Mr. Gildersleeve after seeing that water department calendar he sent us. Oh, I wonder if I should get it and hang it up. I put it out in the garage. Don't bother, I put it in the ash can. <laughs> See now, what can we talk about that'll interest Mr. Gildersleeve? Water? Water? Well, what's there to talk about? It's here and that's all there is to it. <laughs> yes, I suppose so. But perhaps I can think of some questions about it to keep the conversation going. After all, we want to be cordial. Oh, there they are. I'll go to the door, Mother. 
Water. Well, we'll just make the best of it. Hello, Marge. Hello, Bronco. Well, good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Leroy. Hi. Yeah, good evening, Bronco. Oh, come in. I want you to meet my mother and father. Well, that's why we came over, isn't it, Leroy? Yeah, that and for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Thompson and Mr. Thompson. Marjorie, it's so nice to see you, dear. Good evening, my dear. And now, Mother, Father, I'd like to present Mr. Gildersleeve. How do you do, Mr. Gildersleeve? We're delighted to meet you. Yes, indeed. Welcome to our home, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, thank you both. I've looked forward to meeting you. And this is Leroy. <laughs> so this is Marjorie's little brother. How are you, Leroy? Hi. Hello, Leroy. My, what a splendid little man. Yeah? Thanks. <laughs> uh, let me take your coat uh, Thank you, Bronco Marge, you can help me Then I want to show you a new record album I have in the library All right Mother, uh, will we have time to play a few records before dinner? I think so, dear You and Margie run along Oh, you'll excuse us, won't you? Yeah, ta-ta Splendid looking couple, eh, Mr. Thompson? Who? Oh, uh, <laughs> Bronco and Marjorie Yes, yes, to be sure <laughs> Isn't that just like young people? Can't wait to get away from the old folks. Old folks? Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, not that any of us are very old, especially you, Mrs. Thompson. I'm sure that gray hair is premature. <laughs> <laughs> Bad start. Uh, uh, uh. Please sit down, Mr. Gildersleeve, and, uh, uh Leroy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thompson. Can I take the chair with all the birds tattooed on it? <laughs> Leroy, that's needlepoint. <laughs> I should have left that boy at home. You just make yourself at home, Leroy. <sighs> well, well, here we are. Yes. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> we really should have had your family over before, Mr. Gildersleeve Oh, no, we should have had you over before <laughs> Well, anyway, here we are <laughs> <laughs> Yes, indeed uh, Mr. Thompson, I understand you're quite an art connoisseur Well, I've dealt in the moderns, impressionistic and post-impressionistic for a number of years, but... Uh, I imagine mine is a prosaic life compared to anything as exciting as your field. Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve. Tell us about water. <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> there isn't much to tell. Oh, on the contrary, there must be many fascinating facts about water. Strange thing, really. Water, water everywhere. And uh, we never give it a thought. Well, getting it everywhere takes a little doing, Mr. Thompson Oh, it, it must it, It's been a dreadful problem in New York Yeah, they couldn't even take baths <laughs> uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, how long do you think we'll have all the water we want? Well, I'd say as long as Mr. Thompson pays his bill, I guess <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> now, about this modern art, Mr. Thompson. I think Degas' ballet girls are wonderful. The paintings, I mean. <laughs> Have you seen many of Degas' originals? Um, well, uh, <clears throat> it's interesting, too, about uh, Picasso. <laughs> the way he paints both eyes on one side of the head. Yeah, like a halibut. Um, <laughs> oh, I know, I should have left him home. <laughs> Yes, uh, Picasso is quite imaginative Yeah, quite Yes, indeed Good old Picasso <laughs> Oh, good heavens uh, Mr. Gildersleeve uh, uh, Now, uh, take these water shortages uh, how, how large is our world supply? World supply? <laughs> <clears throat> Well, uh, about this modern art... <laughs> yes, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, I... Uh... Oh, brother. <laughs> What's that you were saying about water, Mr. Thompson? Water? Oh, uh, oh Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm afraid I uh, interrupted you. Uh, you were about to say something about modern art. 
I was? And, well, um... Is it too warm in here, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes. Uh, I mean, oh, no. <laughs> chug, 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 chug. Woo, woo. Chug, Leroy, chug, chug. what are you doing? Just running my model engine on the arm of the chair. <laughs> Where did you get that thing? Just happened to find it in my pocket. Say, Leroy, isn't that a B&O dockside switch engine? Sure. How did you know? How did I know? Why, my dear boy, I've been a model railroad fan for years. You have? Gosh, no kidding. Hey, just a moment, Leroy. Oh, the pickup wire on your brass terminal needs a little solder. Don't you think so, Mr. Gildersleeve? Solder? Oh, yeah. Nothing like solder on the brass uh, terminal. <laughs> <laughs> Say, let's all go down into the basement. I'd like to show you my model railroad. Well, fine. Love model railroads. Now, Edward, dinner's almost ready. Oh, we won't be long. Uh, come on, Gildersleeve. Uh, Leroy? Sure, let's go. Well, this is going to be a great evening. Yes, yes, indeed it is. <laughs> little Leroy... Bless his little heart. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. You smart mothers know that when it comes to this nutrition business, there are really only two kinds of foods. They're the foods that are filler-uppers and the foods that are builder-uppers. You give the folks both kinds every day, making sure that your menus include plenty of the builder-uppers. One of these builder-uppers is Kraft's famous cheese food, Velveeta, because it helps supply such fine nourishment from milk. For instance, Velveeta helps give the folks protein for strong muscles, minerals that help build sound teeth and bones, and vitamins needed for normal growth. What's more, Velveeta is digestible as milk itself. So let the snacks at your house be Velveeta snacks. Serve your vegetables with a golden sauce you make with smooth, melting Velveeta. Tomorrow, get it in the two-pound loaf, the swell builder-upper food the whole family likes. Kraft's famous Velveeta. drive home. Gee whiz, why did you have to sit and talk all the time after dinner? Well, that's why Uncle Mort came over, Leroy, to get acquainted with the Thompsons. Yes, yes. Gee, we could have played with the trains. All they did was talk about Bronco, and all you did was talk about Marjorie. Mm -hmm. Holy smoke, what are you going to talk about when they come to our house? I don't know, Leroy. Maybe I'll have my appendix out, and then we can talk about my operation. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. This is Jay Stewart saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Good night. Which suits your taste? Mustard that's mild, delicately spiced, or sharp, snappy mustard with zing in every bite? Either way, you like Kraft prepared mustard. For there are two kinds. Salad mustard, tangy but gentle, and Kraft prepared mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand for different tastes, different uses. Either works magic in bringing out hidden flavor. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft Prepared Mustard. Break the Bank, radio's biggest money-paying show, is next on NBC. <laughs>